Hey everybody, welcome back to Nihilism. I'm Drew. I'm Ryan. We actually <laughs> still do this from time to time. We're not dead yet. Occasionally we do have the time off and have watched certain things. For the five of you that care, we're we're still doing this. And we appreciate it because it does it does keep things interesting, at least <laughs> yeah. for us. So, uh Drew. It's been a few months. The last thing we talked about was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And I have seen quite a bit since then. How about you? I haven't really seen much. I saw Star Wars, which we'll get into at some point. Um, I don't... I've seen a couple trailers recently that are just like, okay, whatever. Maybe I'll go... Maybe I'll put forth the effort to see something like this. But other than that, it's kind of... I'm going to probably watch Mandalorian because everybody says good things about that so far, but I don't know. The Expanse Season 4, I guess, just came out. I do have Prime, so I'll watch that most likely. But other than that, I really just haven't had the time to see much. I'm taking uh, the effort to take the, to take the trip when I am off to go and see anything. What have, what have you seen that, that bears, you know, your witnessing? <laughs> so... In the last few months, I have seen quite a bit um, uncut gems, despite the 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. Y- you'll think you're about to say something. I haven't even seen reviews, but I've heard it's good. It is an unmitigated disaster. Really? Yes. Okay. So, I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just I've heard that it's something that you have to see. Yeah, and, and I saw it. it. It's got a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes as of the last time I this checked. This is the fan review. No, no, the fan review is also fairly high. Uh, We're talking critic reviews, 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, is this just because they're happy to see that Adam Sandler took out the sweatpants? I don't know. But regardless of his performance, which is good, it's perfectly fine. It's not the usual Jack and Jill stuff that he's been uh, doing. That being said, the movie is two and a half hours of... Ugly, and I mean like morally ugly, ugly, miserable people yelling at each other. Uh-huh. It's a bunch of gamblers who are in problems of their own making. It's not like Rounders. Rounders, you at least were sympathetic. Oh, yeah. he's trying to pay his way through law school. So because- it, it kind of it kind of gets it falls into the problem of we want to be morally gray, but they fall so far into the gray that there's really very little redeeming qualities to anybody involved. It's so, not even morally gray. These, there's just, there's not a single relatable character uh, and they never let up the pace, which I understand is what the whole point of the movie was, but two and a half hours of watching people yell and scream and argue with each other with not a single one of those characters having any redeemable qualities makes for one of the most miserable film experiences I have seen yeah. in a very long time. Um, and not like, not like a by, by design. Yeah, it, it is by design. Thing, really? Yeah. Th- that, that was by design. And for some reason, somebody thought that was good. And apparently a lot of critics agree with that. I just find it exhausting. I, yeah. I found it exhausting there. I, I never, I will hold taking a piss through most movies. And you were just like, no, I'm pausing this as much as I possibly can. <laughs> there, I, I left at one scene, went and took a piss, came back, and it was still basically the same scene of people yeah. yelling at each other. I missed nothing. Then I went and got a refill of popcorn. Same thing. Just because I had to step out of the movie. I think I might like the movie better if I was watching it at home where I could pause it yeah. and re- give Come myself back to some it when time you've kind to of, when you've kind caught of my breath. Re- refresh yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was, uh, it, it was pretty awful. <laughs> um, I, I don't understand why people were talking about Adam Sandler, Oscar, War. it just, it, it didn't do it for me. Yeah. On the other if, hand. You wonder if that's just, they gave me free tickets and it's propping up my channel, so I'll say something nice <laughs> type of thing. I, I don't know. Uh, on the other hand, The Lighthouse is absolutely fantastic. And you could now say that it's criminally underrated. Considering that as of today, most of the Oscar nominations are out, and I think the only one that it has that I saw was uh, uh, Best Cinematography, which it, it definitely deserves, uh, but there there's so much more that this movie should have been acknowledged for, and it just it didn't do well um, for some reason at the Academy level. I, I would think with a December release, 
being from such a fantastic director that it would have had a little bit more Oscar buzz around it, but nothing happened. But absolutely 100% my favorite movie of the year. If you have not watched it, definitely do so. Yeah. What else have I seen? Did you see Marriage Story? No, no. My mom um, was watching it, and I, it looked intriguing. And I, a lot of that is because Adam Driver is an excellent actor, which we can get into later. When we talk but, about Star Wars, yeah. But um, no, he's he's good, and apparently it's just, oh yeah, these people who people kind of write off, have written off because of what they've been involved in franchise-wise and forgot that you know they started out as basically artsy right. actors. It, getting back to their roots, just yeah. a small personal movie. I... I am okay with that. Yeah. Uh, I, it is on my short list to watch, but I've been watching so much other stuff that I just haven't gotten to it. Um, what else? What else? What else? I know I've seen other stuff. My girlfriend saw Cats. Oh, I've heard, I've heard that's like, that's one of those ones where where you and I, are, you know how we, we, we like bad stuff? Yeah. But not, not to the like best of the worst quality. Like I haven't really gone out of my way to watch like badly made crap, but like, like cats, I've heard is just like one of those. You have to, you have to, you have to experience some aspect of it. Yeah, I, I didn't see it. She went on a day that I was at work just because she was curious to see if the reviews were as bad. And as you got, they, you got the the holy shit text messages. Like it, they, they didn't scratch the surface type thing. Just the a, a selfie, and she had these confused, almost dead <laughs> eyes that <laughs> said everything like I needed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, the, the look of horror on her face oh, it's, was, uh, well, it said say, everything I needed to know. They say you might have at least be entertained, and it sounds like entertainment. Yeah. Um, I know I saw some other stuff, too. Uh, saw, saw Star Wars. You saw Star Wars. Yeah, that's about the only thing I actually made the effort to see, just because I just didn't, I didn't, it's the most adult I've gone into a Star Wars. I don't know though. Maybe the the new trilogy I've gone into with like an adult, but it's the most um, pessimistic I've ever been about a Star Wars movie. So that that okay, that was a fun experience at least. But uh, no, I like I said, I haven't really seen much. I've watched a couple of trailers recently of stuff that's going to be coming out that is kind of intriguing. But you just haven't. I really just haven't had, had the time, time to really watch anything, honestly. Unfortunately. Uh, I saw Doctor Sleep. I've heard good things, but I don't know if that's just people who were like were surprised that not only was the book good, but <laughs> that you know a, a movie about a post car crash Stephen King uh, like book is actually pretty good. So a lot of people like seem to think that like after he was in that accident, that his stuff has just kind of fallen. I or it's just been adapted in weird ways. I, now the stuff that immediately after the the car crash. Um, I mean, he was hit by a van, so I mean, he was walking at the time. Ah, yeah, I think he was, he, he still lives up in Maine, right? I think he lives more in Florida now, but really? he still has his house in Maine. But the stuff that he put out immediately after, like, he was, he was halfway through his Dark Tower series, and he decided to kind of rush through the last few books because he didn't want to turn out like a Robert Jordan Wheel of Time situation where you die before you're... Before you finish. Right. So the quality did diminish them, uh... But Doctor Sleep has a lot to live up to because it's a direct sequel to The Shining. Which is weird because, again, how... As somebody, like, if you want to just talk about it, um, how does that work? Because it's based on a book that's a direct sequel to the book. Not the Kubrick Shining, but the film is going to be a direct sequel to the Kubrick Shining. Or do they play a little play around with... They play around well to enough kind of fudge it, it in to... that where it's like, okay, stuff that's in Yeah. Stuff looks the same, but it's it's referencing the Stephen King shot. All of the above. I have not read either book actually. I'm well acquainted enough with the general idea to see where what direction they were going uh, in. But going in with the knowledge that I had, I it, knowing the the shoes that it had to fill being a sequel to the shining. And so, and so far, and so after, far removed. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I was impressed that it was actually a sequel to The Shining. It, it that, yeah, does it, it, just use it as like a as like a line to get people to buy a it, ticket. It does its own thing. There's no way that you could just try to recreate The Shining. 
this was not a soft reboot. I guess that's what I'm trying yeah. to say. Uh, this you do eventually go back to the hotel, mm-hmm. which I was a little dubious about, but for the for the story they were doing, I thought it worked. So I'm not saying it's high art. I'm saying that as a very late sequel to The uh, Shining. It, and off of it, how bad the most recent big budget adapta- King adaptation was, you're glad that something yeah. good came out. Yeah, I I liked it much more than I liked the It sequel. Yeah. So yeah, because honestly, that. you, that's that's odd to think about because we've had we've had the Dark Tower, which was an unmitigated disaster, yes. and then you had the two It's that it really it sounds like it really depends on whether you read the book, whether you've seen the original miniseries, or whether you're just you're just done with modern jump scare horror to like that's exactly more traditional. It. Yeah, the the first it was it did stuff besides jump scares, but it made sure there were enough jump scares yeah. in it for the people that are looking for modern jump scare yeah. horror. If you're hearing background noise, that's the dogs. I feel like I'm in that horrible scene in Django Unchained. Which one? Where where they meet Candy? I don't remember that. Where they, where they're just literally a slave fight, and he's just like, totally fine with it. Oh, I <laughs> forgot all about that. So yeah, saw so, uh, b- both of those Stephen King sequels, and there's one more movie that I saw that I'm blanking on. Oh, oh that's a great sign. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I just saw this one, actually. Um, now, some of these movies came out, I, I think... Maybe possibly even before our last episode, but I caught them in second run theater, so it's right around that same time. But I, I saw Ford versus Ferrari. I heard it was better than people expected. I mean, granted, it people was. involved, but it, I don't, I, I don't have a like a descriptive word for that. But it's, it's one of those movies where it's like, well, we're coming out at a crappy time of year. Yeah, we've got a solid script, and we've got two like high level stars. People will probably see this. But it felt like it was one of those, like, oh, it's just something to put out because actors got to act. You know, pay, money's got to be made. Studios have to put stuff out. But I heard it was, like, surprisingly good. It was. I, I understand that if you're not into the subject matter, uh, 1960s automobile racing, that m- it may not be for you. But in terms of just telling a solid human story, <laughs> I I thought it worked. The acting was fantastic. I love the cast. Uh, it's up for an Oscar, I think, for sound mixing, and yeah, absolutely, yeah. I I can I can get behind that given the work they put into uh, the technical side of this movie. And I saw Midsummer. Really, I've heard I've heard that that's just insanity. <laughs> All right, it it works as an indirect sequel to Hereditary. Uh huh. Uh, it's a more artfully done version of, it could have been a very derivative takeoff of something like The Wicker Man. Yeah. And there are influences there, but if you like the visual style and the thematic stuff that Ari Aster gets into, Midsummer is definitely worth watching. Uh Uh-huh. There are no, there are no twists in the plot. You know what's going on. The minute that they get to this village, you know, oh, these people are probably fucked because <laughs> there's a weird Northern European cult sort of thing going yeah. on, and there's a sense of dread. But that's why you're watching it. It's very atmospheric, uh-huh. and the dread comes in. Okay, I know that nothing is going to end well. But how do we get to that yeah. point? How do you convince me? How do you convince me even for fractions of minutes that like something bad's not going to happen, so that I am somewhat surprised when it does? But, but you don't need to. It's you're in the character's shoes, knowing that things are going poorly, and you're just kind of taking that ride with them. Uh, okay. Plus, it gets into some neat thematic stuff, which I was okay with. Uh, there are some scenes of shocking violence, which if, you, if you've seen Hereditary, shouldn't be a surprise. Yeah. <clears throat> I just it? remembered I did see something hilariously. You... I this was this was I, I I watched it in the oh crap Disney's gonna rip everything they can off of Netflix, 
I finally watched Incredibles 2. And it was actually oh. really good. Because they kind of went with the people who saw Incredible. Kind of like what Toy Story's done. I haven't seen the newest Toy Story. But, like, the we know the original audience for this film has grown up a bit more. So the movie's a bit more grown up. But within those bounds, I think it's one of the few Disney PG movies. Oh. And okay. it does have that sensibility. It, it's, it's pretty good. Um, I think it might be still up. Because I, I don't think Disney, like really screwed everybody over with Plus coming out, where they ripped everything off of everything, surprisingly. But, um, no, if you liked Incredibles as one of those, like, wow, Pixar can actually, Disney slash Pixar can actually put out something that's a bit deeper than you would have expected for, like, what you would think would be aimed at kids, and it, it's a growth on that idea that, you know, does stand well enough on its own in that universe. I have never seen any of it. The, the whole Pixar thing just... Never really yeah. did it for well, me. Well, if you ever have have the time, definitely watch Incredibles and Incredibles Two because it's it's a really cool like, uh, kind of kid friendly version of better version of watch of the Watchmen idea of like what happens when superheroes gets outlawed. Okay, that type of thing. Um, but no, that was probably one of the few things that I actually watched. Just funny because it just kind of out of my wheelhouse. But I was like, you know what? I'm worried that Disney's gonna pull everything. And I heard this was as good, and I loved The Incredibles. I was like, I'll watch this, and it was actually pretty good. But other than that, like I said, I've only really seen trailers of stuff that hasn't come out yet, or that might be worth a see. I don't know. Yeah. Any any other TV you you've watched? I mean, you're you've been watching The Expanse, right? I I, I caught I rushed through in like a weekend the first three seasons, and I guess the fourth just dropped. And now that they killed that Amazon killed the tick, which was a pretty good show. I mean, it had its two season run. It got what it wanted to tell story wise out. Um, it'll be interesting to see because it, it, at this point, from what I've gathered about the Expanse like book series, shit's gonna get like weird in terms of like the scale is gonna get huge. And then there's a like a sixty year time skip later in the show, so they might use that to like either be like, okay, we're gonna end before this jump, but it really depends what they want to do but other than that i really haven't seen anything like i said fortunately yeah. time hasn't really given me the opportunity <laughs> i haven't even started the Watchmen yet i haven't either i probably won't oh really i it's lindelof and i already went down that wall with him with lost <laughs> which is one of those weird things now that i think about it because lost came out before the re it came out of the internet age but before the real explosion of like twitter didn't exist when lost was out and there wasn't that immediate level of, of like, reactivity. You still had to really go to message boards to kind of talk with other people. So it's kind of like one of those things that, like, this is going to date us because this is, like, what proves <laughs> that we're early, like, early, early millennials because, like, Lost was great because it was that trying to find out what was going on and having that, like, pre, that, that like, proto- social media to where like you could talk in message board. like i remember like going into message words on my time like when i wasn't in class because i was in college when lost was on and like just reading speculation was fun and i just feel like none of that paid off and i'm like this is damon lindelof he's gonna get so far i've heard that's exactly what happened with the leftovers which is why i stayed away from the leftovers that it just gets to a point where the mystery is kind of outstripped by the fact that you know this is making whatever channel is is running it notoriety so they're gonna keep the show on regardless was that more him or was that abrams no no abrams abrams was on only for i think like the first season and i think a lot of that was because abrams had done so well with alias that uh, okay. abc was like well we'll totally go with a guy who made you know a sleeper hit show i never watched it Alias. Uh, no no lost lost yeah it lost was... is lost is i would argue if you were to watch, like, the first two, maybe three seasons of Lost, it's some of the best, like, mystery TV since, probably since Twin Peaks at the time. And that's, like, a 20-year gap, because Lost, I think, started in, I want to say, like, 08. I, I've got this whole list of TV shows that I didn't get to in the beginning. Things like streaming weren't around, so you had to go out and... Yeah, you had to go out of your way, so you just basically were like, well, if, if somehow it's available, up. now we're in that age where everything's almost available. Like, I could go back... I've never watched Twin Peaks, and I've heard great things, and what little Lynch stuff I've seen is interesting enough that it's like, it might be worth watching this. 
And now it's accessible, stuff like that. There's a whole list of TV shows that I know have that reputation of not ending well. So I've never watched Dexter. I've never watched... um, I I never finished Mad Men. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because we're in that age where what these things were... Were... um, What these things were? Where where these things were... uh, News in of themselves. Like... Mm. Okay. Like, again, this is the early internet like, where things like Gizmodo are coming out and stuff like that, where they're like, okay, we need an article for every day of the week, so let's talk about, like, Sunday's episode of this or Saturday's premiere of this or whatever. Um, Kind of like what replaced appointment television back in the, the dark ages pre-internet. <laughs> but, um, no, it's, it's just one of those weird situations where... Um, yeah, you, you kind of don't watch the show, but but through osmosis, you kind of start hearing, like, oh, stuff's going off the rails in this show. Yeah. So you never invest the time later down now that it, it's, it's accessible for a lot of that stuff. And unfortunately, the good shows from that time, like, The Shield are criminally impossible to find. That's because of how they shot it. I've been looking into that because I wanted yeah. to... Uh, I was gonna they, buy haven't able to do a, a blue, they haven't been able to do a... 1080 4K transfer while because keeping of the, the original film look of it. Right, it, and it just looks bad, so I might be stuck getting that on DVD. Which wouldn't be bad, because that show is exceptional. <laughs> so, let's, uh, let's call it there. That's That's been our catch-up, what we've seen, and uh, I, we're going to we're gonna come back very shortly, and we're going to talk about... Striking while the iron is... Already cold. Ice cold. <laughs> yeah. But Star Coming Wars, back to Dark Star Wars. yes. Thanks for uh, sticking with us during our little hiatus. Hopefully, we'll be able to do more of this soon.